Nicole Moore is a mitigation coordinator for the Texas Division of Emergency Management. She covers 23 counties, um, Central Texas from Hill Country down up to north to Waco, Hayes County, south of Austin. And then um, before TDM, she was a responsive firefighter and a licensed paramedic. And she also worked at local government services, helping folks get uh, federal grant money and get their applications done. So she's well versed in this topic. So with that, take it away. Like you said, I'm Nicole Moore. I am with TDEM, Texas Division of Emergency Management. Uh, my role specifically is to help y'all get money uh, for projects. Um, generators is one of them. This is me, 10 inches of hair go. Um, same person though. I cover the upper 23 counties of Region 6, so that spans all the way from Hayes County to Hill County. If you want to go ahead and grab my email, if not, I brought a bunch of business cards for y'all. Um, if you have questions that you don't want to ask um, in front of anyone, or if you have any questions that I maybe can't answer, um, go ahead and shoot me an email. Okay, so what is hazard mitigation? It is any sustained action taken to reduce or eliminate the long-term risk to communities. What is the hazard mitigation grant program? Uh, this is how we get the funding. It goes through FEMA. Technically, TDEM is considered the applicant. Uh, Y'all would be considered the sub-applicant. So HMGP funding follows a presidential disaster declaration. Um, most recently, we had Winter Storm Mara declared. Um, we should see something about funding uh, sooner or later. We're not sure on a time frame on that. But that's kind of how it works. And sub-applicants do not have to be in that declared area. I know it was a lot of, you know, the lower region six that was declared, you do not have to be within that declared area to apply for funding. So we do have multiple programs under the hazard mitigation assistance. This is a few of them. These are offered at a 75 to 25% cost share. So the federal cost share is 75% and then your half or your portion is 25%. So these are the different types of projects. Obviously we're here to talk about generators today. So emergency generators is on the list. I'll leave that up for y'all to read a little bit. Okay, so in order to apply for hazard mitigation funding, you do have to have a current hazard mitigation plan. Uh, this is either done through the city or the county, with the exception of private nonprofits. This does not apply. They do not have to have a hazard mitigation plan. In the plan, you do have to have the action item addressing what you would like to apply for. So if you are looking to apply for a generator for your critical facility, um, whether that be a police station or a well site. You do have to have that action item in the plan. It will say uh, that you do want to install a generator at this location and that is part of that, that plan as an action item. If it's not in there, uh, FEMA will not approve your application. We always have our current funding opportunities posted on the TDEM website. Uh, we do not have any open right now. Uh, BRIC will come open in the fall. That is building resilient infrastructure in communities. The caveat to that one, you do have to have, um, I say have to, it, it deducts, I think it's 15 to 20 points if you don't have building codes. Um, so we lose a lot of points as the state of Texas. Uh, California gets most of that money um, through the BRIC program but you can still apply for that one. Like I said, uh, Winter Storm Mara will be coming up very soon. Uh, we'll be pushing that NOFO out when we get that. So some of the requirements for the application process, you do have to have a GMS account, and that is our grant management system, and that's run through TDEM. This is where you go to sign up. It is grants.tdem.texas.gov. And then up here where it says how to register, that is a link to a job aid if you need help uh, registering for an account. Okay, so with generator applications, there is a lengthy requirement. So this is kind of what it looks like in our system. Um, you have your introduction, which kind of lists out who your uh, primary contacts are gonna be. The next one down is a worksheet. I have a, another slide where we'll, we'll go over the worksheet. It asks a lot of questions about uh, the generator typing, the sizing, how thick is the pad going to be, where is it going to be at, what are the GPS coordinates, is it in a floodplain, um, you know, site photos, it, it's a lot of requirements. Um, so the next one down is your scope of work. 
if it's not in the scope of work, it's not gonna happen or they can pull funding. Um, so just wanna make that very clear, make sure your scope of work is very clear, very detailed. Um, the costs, they are gonna itemize costs. FEMA doesn't like to see lump sums, so if you can avoid that, that's fantastic. Um, they do like to see everything lined out though. Uh, the alternative section is going to be where you put your project alternatives. Obviously the primary goal is to perform the project that you are submitting. Uh, the second alternative is to, you know, I've seen examples of rent a generator when you're in a pinch, um, but that's not always feasible. And then the third alternative is no action, which is, you know, not, not ideal. Um, your timeline, uh, this is kind of what the timeline looks like right here. You just have to make sure that you're being realistic with your timeline. Um, you know, FEMA's going to go over that and they'll let you know if it's unrealistic or not. Um, I know generators are, you know, a little hard to get these days and they take a lot of time. So just um, kind of keep that in the back of your mind of keeping that timeline realistic. Um, so certifications, that's more documentation. And then below that is also more documentation. So this is what that worksheet looks like. Um, I pulled one from a current project that we have. These are the questions that they're gonna ask. So these are the things that you know, you'll have to gather uh, while you're developing the application. Um, we are always here to help, but a lot of this is gonna be um, you know, put on you. It's, it's a hefty load. So this is not all inclusive, but this is a list of the documentation we need for uh, the application process. It does take a while. Um, and it does take a while to get funding, so I don't want to um, make y'all think that it's a quick application, that it's a quick turnaround time. Um, you know, I would, I would plan for a minimum of two years. Honestly, FEMA works at FEMA's pace, uh, so we work with them and we, we try to do things as quickly as we can, but we, sometimes our hands are tied a little bit. Um, so these are just some of the things we'll need, uh, like I talked about, GPS coordinates, generator specs, your format for your floodplain. If you are putting one in a floodplain, it will need to be elevated. Your timelines and then uh, just additional documentation. You will also have to do a SHPO consultation um, through the Historic Preservation Office. That'll make sure that you're not disturbing anything historical. So this is Martin. He is y'all's DC uh, for this area. He covers the counties up there, Bosque, Hill, McLennan, Falls, Limestone, and Freestone. If you ever have any questions and you can't get a hold of me, uh, he can, so go ahead and give him a call. And that is all I have for y'all. Do y'all have any questions? Let's say you bought a generator a year ago, let's just say. Could you fill out the paperwork and maybe down the road get partial funding? For one that's already purchased? Yes. No. Okay, so it has to be fill out all prior before you ever buy anything or get approved or anything? Correct. Um, so that would be considered um, doing the project before even approval or um, the application has been funded. So yeah, you cannot start work before that's happened. Yes, sir. Does it need to be a on-site generator or can it be a portable generator if you have several lift stations that are smaller that may need auxiliary power during a uh, power outage? I've seen the portable generators. Um, I haven't seen in the applications that I have, I haven't seen anyone ask for one, uh, but I will, I will make sure that that's an allowable, but, but I believe so. What are some of the other types of projects that could be considered for this funding that would relate to maybe a utility that you've seen? Uh, so we do all kinds of stuff. We do uh, wildfire mitigation, we do uh, drainage projects, um, so like flood diversion. Um, we have a lot of generator applications <laughs> right now, honestly. Um, but we've we've got a lot of a lot of different things. Um, you can also, if you don't currently have a plan, um, you can get funding for that also, because I know you know it is required for the HMGP funding to have a plan. So you can also get funding for that to get funding for other, other other items down the road. Quick follow-up question. So this morning we had some uh, local emergency management coordinators um, visit with us and they mentioned that um, that 
items have to be in, in the hazard mitigation plan for the county. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They have to be action items in there. If you already have a current plan, it's not very hard to submit an amendment to that. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but if it's not already in there, it's not that difficult to get added in if that's something you would like to pursue with the, with the next funding cycle. Okay. Thank you all for your time.